Hi, in this video I will introduce the concept of electromagnetic induction and we'll have a look at two laws by Lenz and Faraday. We know from earlier in this topic that charges moving in a magnetic field will experience a force. Let's consider the electrons inside a wire. The wire is placed in a uniform magnetic field, into the screen in this case, and the wire is then moved across the magnetic field, cutting through these field lines. As far as the electrons are concerned, they are moving particles in a magnetic field. Therefore, according to Fleming's left-hand rule, and remember that conventional current moves in the opposite direction to electron flow, they will experience a force perpendicular to both the field and their motion. So here, because the electrons are being moved to the right, they experience a conventional current to the left, our field is into the page, so our electrons are experiencing a force down the screen. This force is moving the electrons along the wire, so we have a current. This is electromagnetic induction, and it is the principle behind the electricity generators that power our modern lives. How does this apparently magical generation of electricity conserve energy? Well, the induced current in this wire will set up a second Fleming's left-hand rule situation. This time, our second finger points in the direction of the conventional current flow in our wire. In our case here, up the screen, in the opposite direction to the movement of the electrons. With our field still acting into the screen, that results in a force on the wire acting to the left. In other words, opposing the force that we're applying to move it through the magnetic field. The harder we push on the wire, the more current is induced, and therefore the bigger the force we have to overcome. We have to do work against this force, so energy is conserved. This principle is known as Lenz's law. In full, Lenz's law says, the direction of induced current is always such as to oppose the change that causes the current. In other words, whatever we do to induce a current, that current will always create a force to oppose our action. But how can we work out the size of the EMF that is induced across our wire? Well, we know that voltage or EMF is equal to the work done per unit charge. Work done is equal to force times the displacement in the direction of the force which we'll call delta S here. That's how far we've moved through our field. And the force we're applying here is a push against the magnetic force due to our induced current. So that force is going to be equal to B I L, the magnetic force. And then we multiply by the displacement to get the work done against that force. And the charge here is the induced current flow, I, multiplied by the time over which that current is flowing, delta T. So we can put all this together to get EMF is equal to B I L delta S divided by I delta T. Cancelling the I's gives us B L delta S over delta T. So our equation can be simplified again to B delta A, the change in the area, divided by delta T. In my previous video, I introduced magnetic flux and flux linkage. And we know that flux is equal to BA for a single wire. So our EMF is equal to the change in the flux divided by the change in the time. Now in a real generator we wouldn't have just a single wire, we'd have multiple loops of wire. So we multiply by the number of turns n to get the EMF is equal to n delta phi over delta t. And then finally we need to account for Lenz's law which says that the EMF needs to oppose the change that created it. So we add a minus sign. This equation 
represents Faraday's law. The induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. Faraday's law is one of the most important equations in physics. It tells us how we can create electricity simply by moving a conductor in a magnetic field. It also gives us a few clues about things that we can do to increase the EMF. For example, we can change the flux linkage faster. For example, by spinning a coil faster in a magnetic field. Or we can increase B, the magnetic flux density. If we increase the flux density, that means we increase the flux and therefore we increase the rate of change of flux linkage. We'll get a higher EMF. Or we can wind more turns on our coil and increase N. Or we can increase the size of our coil so that it sweeps through a larger area and therefore has a higher flux linkage. Let's finish with a quick example. A square loop of wire with 200 turns and sides 10 centimetres long is inserted into a magnetic field a flux density 60 milliteslas in a time of 25 milliseconds. Calculate the average EMF induced across the ends of the loop. So we know that the EMF is equal to minus the rate of change of flux linkage. And in terms of B, that gives us B A N over delta T. So substituting in minus 60 milliteslas multiplied by 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 to give us our area multiplied by 200 turns divided by 25 milliseconds. That gives us an EMF of 4.8 volts.